Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Chris Dubuque. I am an application engineer manager located in our Portland, Oregon office for computer aided technology. Uh, today, I would like to spend the next 35 or so minutes sharing what I hope are a few SOLIDWORKS sketching tips and tricks. Now, before I get into the bulk of the presentation, I just want everyone to think about just for a moment, what do you think about when someone says software tip or trick? Uh, maybe it is a keyboard shortcut. I'll admit that's pretty, uh, that's an easy one to, to add to this category. Uh, possibly lesser known commands or maybe newer commands. You know, as SOLIDWORKS um, gets new releases, of course, there's new functionality. But we can't forget about the older ways or maybe classic ways of doing things in SOLIDWORKS. Sometimes those old ways are some really really nice pieces of functionality. Uh, those super elegant solutions, what I like to think of as uh, using the software to make you look like a SOLIDWORKS hero. Unfortunately, I don't usually fall underneath that category there. Uh, maybe it's a little bit of everything. Quite possibly it's something that I didn't put on this list because this is by no means an exhaustive list of, of sketching tips or tricks or really any type of tips or tricks. Um, when I think of it, though, it's really anything that helps you be more efficient using the software, something that saves you time, something that saves you mouse movement, um, makes your job easier. Anything like that, I think, can fall underneath this category. So as I go through today's presentation, I'm going to hit on a few bullet points here. First off, very quick example of some suggestions or best practices, uh, some sketch review, because we do need to start somewhere in this grand scheme of things. I will mention a few keyboard shortcuts and specifically these are keyboard shortcuts that you'll see me use when I get into the SOLIDWORKS examples of using the software. I'll then go through a couple of live examples of some relation tips, some dimensioning tips, just general sketching tips that I really couldn't find a more appropriate category for. And then of course, last but not least, I'm going to briefly talk about some tips for 3D sketching. So let's start off with some best practices. And this is a very brief overview. The first thing I want to mention is don't forget about your design intent or your plan on how your sketch and your model should behave when you change it. Uh, a little bit of extra time taken during the design intent phase, really planning the model out, can save you a ton of time down the road when making design changes and sharing this model and this sketch and, and everything that you've done with some other user within your organization. Take advantage and really use the primary planes, not just to select the front plane and insert a sketch, but it get into a, a process of continually dimensioning, relating, mirroring, really using those planes, create new reference planes off of those three primary planes. If you get into the habit of, of using these planes, you lessen the chance of running into dangling dimensions, dangling relations, because these planes, they never change in our SOLIDWORKS parts. Take advantage of construction geometry. There you can see uh, that icon uh, to highlight there whenever you select an entity. Most SOLIDWORKS users, you know, myself included, we're all familiar with the uh, center line sketch icon. But don't forget that every single sketch entity, circles, rectangles, splines, ellipse, etc., they can all be converted to construction geometry or from construction geometry back to solid geometry with this little button you can see on screen. Keep your sketches simple. Uh, maybe this kind of is a follow-up to the idea about design intent. Keep thinking about that. Over my years of, of working with customers in SOLIDWORKS, I've seen sketches that have several hundred sketch entities and multiply it by two or three times the number of sketch relations and dimensions. Uh, that creates a very cumbersome sketch. It's hard to understand. It's very, you know, right on that teetering edge of being unstable. Add one more dimension or one more uh, relation and the whole sketch begins to no longer solve or go over to fine. So keep them simple, break them into smaller sketches, You'll get some better performance. It's going to be easier to understand, easier to share, and easier to reuse these sketches over and over and over. And when you're ready to use a command such as fully defined sketch to fully define it, 
you do not need to fully define technically any sketch in SolidWorks. Uh, but in my experience, a sketch that is underdefined will only change at the absolute least opportune time. Right when you need the part before a design review or something along those lines, that's when the sketch will blow up. So use a command such as fully defined sketch or just take the time to add those additional dimensions or relations to your sketch so it only moves when you, the user, decide to make those changes. And another thing I like to mention is rename important sketches. I don't say rename every single sketch or every single dimension feature in the, in the design manager tree, but rename what's important. What are those critical sketches to help you capture the design intent? So you can use the click, pause, click the mouse, or of course the Windows hotkey of F2. They both work the same way to rename those sketches that you deem important. So as I mentioned, very brief, just a couple of bullet points of what I would like to think of some best practices to getting into sketching. Something that I like to share with newer users, especially when I'm teaching the SolidWorks Essentials class, is you know my relations cheat sheet, the little callouts that you see on your sketches as you're creating your sketches and as those relations are added in there. Sometimes just understanding the difference between the callout for a coincidence versus a midpoint can be all the difference in the world in helping you capture and maintain that appropriate design intent. So just something that I've created out or created, excuse me, feel free to grab a screenshot or email me if you'd like a copy of it and we can go ahead and get that to you. Pin it on the wall, commit them to memory and then recycle the paper afterwards, I guess. What about a little mouse review, just kind of getting started? Uh, there's two different ways you can use the mouse. First way is the click, 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 create a chain of connected entities. Uh, but there's also, I'll say the classic way, or the way that I learned how to use in SOLIDWORKS because it was the only way. And that was to click, hold down the left mouse button and move the mouse. So basically click and stretch entities out. Uh, the nice benefit to that click and drag technique is you create one entity at a time. So click, click, click for chains, uh, click and chain or click and drag, excuse me, for one single entity. And the other thing, as you sketch, don't forget about those inference lines. Hesitate and hover over existing geometry so you can add relations such as you saw there in that little animation parallel on the fly to help you capture that design intent and really speed this process and move it forward. So very brief best practices, very brief review. Let's get into some keyboard shortcuts you'll see me use here in just a couple of minutes. First off, the letter S, the shortcut toolbar, the S key. In my opinion, yes, it is just an opinion, but I do think this is one of the greatest things ever inside of SOLIDWORKS. I, I love it. It's user customizable. You can put any command. Uh, there's one for sketching. There's one for features, assemblies, drawings, and you can mix and match. And what I mean by that is on my sketching toolbar, like you see in the screenshot, you can have feature commands such as extruded boss or extruded cut or revolve. Makes it very, very easy to go from sketch to feature and back and forth like that. Another very useful command, uh, the D key, brings that confirmation corner directly to the mouse, and this complements the S key. You know, Notice on your keyboard, they are right next to one another. With a little bit of practice, you can create a sketch, switch over to an extruded boss, build in the command without even needing to move your mouse, just using combinations of the S key and the D key. One of my favorites in SOLIDWORKS, the letter A to auto transition between lines and tangent arcs. Click A and it'll switch over for you. But don't forget the kind of old school or that lesser known way of doing things in SOLIDWORKS. Just use a mouse gesture. Move your mouse back to the end of the arc or back to the end of the line and SOLIDWORKS will switch over to that tangent arc for you. So single click A or leverage that mouse gesture. A nice way to get right to those tangent arc auto transitions. Another one of my favorites, and I always get a lot of questions about this particular hotkey when I kind of use it in a in a face-to-face -face environment, and that is holding down the control key. It disables the automatic relations. So as we sketch in SOLIDWORKS, uh, the sketcher is always looking to add relations, coincidence, parallel, in this example, a midpoint. But if you do not want it, hold down the control key. The software ignores that entity. Therefore, you can create that sketch point anywhere you need in the sketch and then work with it after the fact. So as I mentioned, just a couple of keyboard shortcuts that you'll, you'll see me using here in a few moments. 
And now let's get into some live examples here. And the first thing I want to talk about, a shortcut and a tip for generating our relations, is you can add them with a single click. Simply select the entity, that entity point between, as you can see on the screen here, that's an arc on the bottom and a spline up above. And SolidWorks will give us the applicable relations with one click. So nice little shortcut there. A new relation, this came out a couple of releases ago, but I really like to talk about it, torsional continuity allows us to control the rate of change of the curvature to create very, very smooth entities. And this is a way to uh, really smooth sketches out, again, with just a couple clicks of the mouse. And then finally, favorites. I'm showing an example here in sketch favorites, but these are applicable all across SOLIDWORKS functionality. So let's switch over to SOLIDWORKS and take a look at these here real quick. So I'm going to start off with the model, which some of you may recognize from one of our What's New presentations a few years back. And I'll turn on the zebra stripes all through my shortcut toolbar there. And we can see there's a pretty significant discontinuity on that highlighted edge. So our job is to go in and, of course, fix it. Now, because I'm familiar with this part, I know that that profile is all defined in sketch number one. But to make this easier to use for one of my coworkers, I'm going to right click on that sketch and add it to favorites there. Once I do that, that information is stored at the top of the manager tree. That could be sketches, features, really whatever you think is important. Really easy to get there. So now when I edit the sketch, I have my curvature combs turned on and we can visibly see the differing length in those combs that shows us the discontinuity. So we click the point, and let's try to add a tangent relation in there. And once we do that, the curvature combs come a little bit closer to one another as far as length is concerned, but there's still a stair step. So that's that discontinuity we're working with. The next example might be to add equal curvature. So this is going to help us control that a little bit better, but we can see a fairly dramatic slope. Now that's as good as we've been able to get in SOLIDWORKS for many, many releases. But again, 2019, 2020, I forget when they put this in there, we can now say make torsion continuity. So once we add this in there, we can see the transition of those curvature combs is really perfectly smooth, at least as close as we can get it. But that was one click of the mouse, one relation, and you'll see when we flip the model around and go back into our zebra stripes, that edge essentially disappears. So very, very effortless way to add a nice, seamlessly smooth transition there. So to wrap up, you know, when working with your relations, just click the point between the adjacent entities. We can add that relation. Don't forget about new relations such as torsional continuity. And of course, in this example, sketch favorites, but you can use them for features and even favorite components at the assembly level. So moving on here quite rapidly, Let's talk about a few dimension tips. And one of the most common questions I get asked is adding dimensions to the tangencies of arcs and circles. So I want to walk through that example here. It's all about leveraging the shift key on the keyboard. That's what makes it happen. Another common question I get is that 150 millimeter dimension or the doubled value dimension. How do we get those in SOLIDWORKS? Well, they're fairly easy to get if you know exactly where to click the mouse and more importantly, what to sketch inside your sketch. So switching back into SOLIDWORKS, let's start a new part and kind of walk through these examples to adding in some dimensions. So the, we'll start off by putting in a sketch on the front plane, start off or continue, I should say, with a few pieces of construction geometry, vertical and horizontal line to help us capture that design intent and we'll switch over to a center point tangent arc. Click and drop the center point, drag the arc out, or I should say that's a slot, not an arc, excuse me, and that's all that there is to it. Now this is where I'll slow down and really talk through the process. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key when I select the arc on the left, continue to hold down the shift key while I select the arc on the right, left click the mouse, place the dimension, and that's all there is to it. So holding down the shift key, we go arc to arc and SOLIDWORKS switches from the center points over to those tangencies. One more 20 millimeter dimension and we are done. So now let's dimension, I'll say the overall diameter of this feature. 
So hold down the shift key, select the arc on the right. And now we're going to dimension to that vertical center line. And that's the critical sketch entity. We must have an, a sketch center line in the active sketch to dimension to. Once we dimension to that center line, we can either position the dimension on the near side, as you can see there on the screen, 59.063 you know, millimeters, or we move the mouse to the far side of the center line, and that's the trick. That's all there is to it. Dimension to a center line, move the mouse to the far side. SolidWorks will automatically double it for you. Key in the value, place the dimension, and at this point, we're ready to create a revolve boss. So a nice little bonus tip with this technique, when we use that double dimension and then we create a revolve feature, you'll see here when I grab the 120 millimeter dimension, notice there's a diameter symbol on it. Did anybody see me add? Nope, SolidWorks does that automatically. So that's one of those extra little time savers that's just built in there Double the value, revolve the feature, you'll get that bonus diameter symbol without needing to do anything. So the takeaway from this dimensioning tip example, don't forget, add that center line to your sketch. That's gonna make it easy to add that double dimensional value there. Watch the cursor feedback, move it from the near side to I'll say the far side of that center line, and that's all there is to it. A couple other sketching uh, dimension tips I want to mention. Virtual sharps, those are those intersections you can see uh, being highlighted with the orange arrows on the screen. The difference between the automatically created one and the manual created one. How do we get those in there and how can we differentiate between auto and manual virtual sharps? So this is another one of those that it's actually pretty easy once you know what to look for, like all things inside of SOLIDWORKS, aren't they? So I'll open up another example. Really simple sketch, just a couple of lines, couple of arcs, but once I go into edit sketch mode, I do want to highlight that I have a few virtual sharps in there. But first, let's turn off all the sketch relations, and in the upper left and the lower left corners of my sketch, we have virtual sharps in there. And we can get SOLIDWORKS to automatically add virtual sharps by adding dimensions to the sketch first. So notice that vertex on the lower right is now fully defined. When we add a dimension, or excuse me, when we add a fillet there and we key in a value, there is an option within the sketch fillet command called keep constrained corners. When that is on and we say OK, that 45 millimeter dimension is maintained because the software extends those, those two angled lines through a virtual sharp. So that's the key here. Fully define the sketch and then fill it. But what if you don't use that workflow? What if you add a fillet before you add the dimensions in there like we've done here? That's okay, we can add virtual sharps after the fact and this is that manual method. And all I'm doing is holding down the control key, selecting those two lines, the horizontal and the angle, and then we use the sketch point command. And once we do that, you'll see we get that blue virtual sharp. So that's the vertex, that's the intersection that we can go ahead and simply add the dimension to. Yet there is a third way of creating a virtual sharp in our SOLIDWORKS sketches. And this falls underneath the category of those really slick or those really elegant solutions. And it's not something I can take credit for. This was shown to me, uh, and I, I think this is pretty neat. So let's take a look at this example. So we'll undo a few steps here, remove the virtual sharp, and the real slick way of doing this is to turn on the dimension command, right click, and in the right click menu, you'll see find intersection. So when we choose find intersection, we'll select the other line, the virtual sharp is created and pre-selected for us, which is really cool. So all we need to do is select the origin point to put in that 40 millimeter dimension. So add the dimension, right click, find intersection, that really elegant or really slick way of doing things as another way to get a virtual sharp in there. Now, virtual sharps are very useful in our SOLIDWORKS drawings. 
Many times you don't have the vertex to dimension two. Thankfully, they work the exact same as you've just seen here in our 2D sketch example. So as we're getting close to the end here, let's go from some specific examples to some more generic kind of sketching tools examples. And the first example I want to talk about are generic splines. So these allow us to easily modify any converted or offset entity where the result is a spline. Maybe it's an offset of an ellipse, or maybe it's simply an offset of a spline or convert entities of a spline. You'll see we can easily manipulate these. So let's jump over to SOLIDWORKS again and go through this example. And this is another one of those you all might remember or you might recognize from our surface modeling class. I will simply hold down the control key, drag the front plane to make an offset copy. And upon that new plane, let's create a new sketch. And on plane number two, we'll select our previous sketch of a spline of the body of the guitar and just simply do a convert. Now, as expected, once we use convert entities, this sketch cannot be modified. Well, we can remove the on edge relationship. Once we do so, the entire sketch can now be moved. But that's not really what we want to do. We want to manipulate and change the shape of that spline. Well, notice what I have um, I'm pointing at there over in the property manager. It is a generic spline. So this is an entity type that SolidWorks added. Really didn't get much fanfare when this functionality was put inside the software, but I found it extremely useful, especially when we move our mouse down under the options selections and turn on the show control polygon. Yes, that is the same kind of sketch control polygon that we can use for our other spline types in SOLIDWORKS to manipulate them. So once we turn that on, we can now click and drag the various vertices on the control polygon and completely manipulate and change its shape. So very, very easy to work with. If you would prefer some other type of spline, you can right click and convert it to a style spline. We do need to say OK or yes to understand that it, a style spline is going to be an approximation here. But once we continue with the conversion, we have our control vertices and our control construction lines, and we can manipulate our style spline to the nth degree. And if traditional B splines are more your speed, of course, right click, convert to spline. And now we get a standard B spline with our control vertices, our spline points, our polygons, our tangency handles. And at this point, the sky is the limit as far as making those changes. So really easy thing to do. Don't forget, just the whole process begins by showing those control points on our generic splines. Now there has been a command, this is one of those maybe older commands where you could get similar functionality and it's the simplify spline inside of SOLIDWORKS. You may have uh, seen that over the years. But I will say generic splines, so much easier to work with, so much more control. Uh, definitely check them out. I think it could save you some time, help you out. And then one of, my say, or one of my favorite little workflows inside of SolidWorks, and that is to merge and split sketch entities. Take multiple entities, merge them to one, in this case, two lines. We can add a collinear to do that. Two arcs can be merged to a circle through a co-radial relation. Uh, splines can actually be merged, two splines that is, to a single spline by a curvature continuous relation. And this can all be reversed by taking a single entity and splitting it. One thing that I've realized over the years of using SOLIDWORKS and sketching is you don't always get the number of entities correct the first time. Sometimes you need more, sometimes you need less. And thankfully, with a few clicks of the mouse, it's a very, very flexible way to go uh, to and from. So let's take a look at a few of these examples here. So we'll start a new sketch really quickly and just some nonsense, nonsense sketch entities. And let's start with just a vertical construction line or a solid line, really doesn't make any difference here. And then upon that line, we will create an angled line. Learning or using what we learned earlier, select that single point, we will make them collinear. And now we can come back in, select that common point, and delete on the keyboard. And lo and behold, it's now a single sketch line. So SOLIDWORKS will merge them together. 
We can do the same with two arcs. I'll use three point arcs for this example. And we'll just go in point to end point, third click to stretch out the radius. We will select one point and say make co-radial. That will share the diameter, share the center point, and select that point, and you can see it's now a single circle. But the real power in this, at least in my experience, is with spline. So sketching a single spline here, and then we'll start over and create a second spline. And I'm kind of uh, exaggerating the break in continuity there. But once we select that point, we can say add equal relationship there, equal curvature. Come back in and delete that common point. Now it's replaced with a spline point, which we can then go in and also delete. And now we have a nice, smooth, much larger continuous spline. So it's a very flexible workflow. And what if we need to take a single spline or any entity and split it? Well, you can see right-click Sketch Tools Split Entities. Left-click on the spline, and our single spline is now two splines, but maintaining that continuity. Same is true with our circle. I like this command so much, I always have it on my shortcut toolbar. There's the Split Entities command. And click once, and then click a second time. Our single arc, or excuse me, single circle is split into two arcs. So very, very flexible methodology inside of SOLIDWORKS, merging and splitting our sketch entities. Now there is a nice, I'll say, bonus way to do this, and that is the sketch segment command that can automate splitting a sketch into equally spaced segments or adding sketch points into uh, equally spaced points upon any existing sketch entity. And last but not least, almost out of time here, so let's wrap up by discussing a few tips for our 3D sketches. Now the one thing I will say about 3D sketches is they are everyone's favorite sketching functionality inside of SOLIDWORKS. All right, bad humor, I'll admit it. We probably aren't big fans of 3D sketches. They can be difficult, they can be confusing, um, most likely because we don't need to use them every single day in SOLIDWORKS like we use a 2D sketch. You know, once we uh, have all six degrees of freedom, X, Y, and Z, and then the rotations around those axes to work with, we just have to be that much more careful about really maintaining our design intent. So when you get into three, uh, 3D sketching, a few things to remember. First and foremost, use the tab key on the keyboard. That flips the temporary X, Y, Y, Z, Z, X coordinate system you're working in. You know, flips that makes it easy to work with. You can take the 3D viewport of SOLIDWORKS. Instead of one, you can split it to four. Makes it much easier to manipulate those 3D sketches. You can also use the sketch triad by right-clicking on a sketch entity. Another way to manipulate a 3D sketch so it only moves in X, Y, or Z, or X, Y, Z, X type orientations. You'll see that in a moment. So let's look at how we can make, hopefully, hopefully make 3D sketches a little bit easier to work with. So as we start a new 3D sketch, we'll go ahead and I'll turn on a sketch entity here. And you'll see, I'm going to start with the center line. Notice the larger red axes and the XY next to my mouse. That's the temporary 2D sketching plane I'm currently in. Now, as I go through and hit uh, the tab key, it'll switch from XY to now YZ. We'll tab one more time to the ZX plane. So as we sketch, we can use the tab key to help us control the orientation. So let's take a look at how this works. So we'll start off and we'll just sketch in the, I guess, negative X direction and then the positive Y direction. Now I need to come in the Z direction. So in order to do that, we hit the tab key and we'll sketch out a few millimeters here in the uh, Z direction. I now need to go back into the XY plane. So we'll tab at least, there we go, at least in the X direction, I can grab that relationship there use tab to go down in that XY plane. And then one final sketch entity, we're gonna tab to use the Z coordinate system to get us back towards the origin. So just a silly little sketch for this example. But it's all about kind of going slow, watching the cursor feedback and using the tab key. 
So one thing I realized is I accidentally created everything in construction geometry. So I'm going to select those lines and use that pop-up toolbar, that construction geometry toggle, to convert them from construction over to regular solid geometry. So there we can see uh, one of my first slides in action here. And we'll just add a relation. Um, but don't forget, as you can see, I try to drag and drop. You cannot do that in a 3D sketch. You must multi-select. So control key, control select those two points. We'll merge them together. And I think that'll look pretty good here. And that's really all there is to this sketch. I'm not going to go through and add, add much more, uh, but it gets us the general idea of how to work with a 3D sketch. So now let's go look at splitting the viewport. So the window pull down menu, viewport, and we'll go into a four view. And this will give you a front top right or front top left, depending on your settings. But as you move the sketch in the front top and how I have it set up left views, those are two dimensional movements only. Yet in the trimetric view or isometric view, however you like to have it set up, you can manipulate the sketch in full three dimensional space. So it's a nice way to toggle between three dimensional manipulation of your sketch and 2D manipulation in the front, top, and left or right uh, different orientations. Now, what about making changes within the 3D sketching environment? And that is to right click and use the sketch triad. So just right click on any vertex, show the sketch triad, and then you can move the entity in XYZ or XYZX, YZ, what have you. Right click on some other entity, and we can then show the sketch triad on that particular entity. So this tool really makes it easy to manipulate a 3D sketch and put those segments exactly where you need it to go. And then finally, I want to talk about some sketch dimension tips for 3D sketches. And I found this completely by accident inside of SolidWorks. So the first dimension, that 50 millimeter dimension, that was really easy. SolidWorks understands it's or recognizes it's along Z and gives me a, a directional dimension along the Z. But what about this vertex to vertex going kind of across uh, the model? Well, you can actually use the tab key to, sh to change the dimension type. So currently it's the straight line distance, but if I use tab, look at that, it goes into the X um, vector value, Y or Z. So really easy way to add those dimensions in there. So that is also just using the tab key to change X, Y, Z or the true linear distance between those vertices in a 3D sketch. So we'll key that value in. I think that looks pretty good. And there we have just a few examples, a few things that I have found quite useful to keep, you know, kind of keep in my back pocket of tools for SolidWorks to help make 3D sketching almost as easy as our 2D sketching is. So with a little bit of practice, I think they can be maybe not your favorite, but one of your favorite pieces of functionality inside of SolidWorks. So there you can see for the last about 35 or so minutes, we covered a few best practices, kind of some cheat sheets there, um, you know, keyboard shortcuts, some tips for our relations, our dimensions, our sketching general tools, and even just a few tips for our 3D sketches. So with that, I want to say thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate your attendance. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, you know, you just want to reach out and talk a little bit more about sketches, there's my contact information. Please feel free to reach out. And with that, I'll say everyone, thank you so much. Have a great day and see you soon.